Hi, Matt Byer of Matt Byer Organizing with Organizing Pending Items. One of my YouTube followers writes, What do you recommend for borrowed stuff you need to return to a friend, family member you don't see very often? I usually place the stuff near the door, but then when I see the person, forget it, and it stays taking up space for months to come. Tupperware, forgotten hat, kids' toys, books. Thank you. Thank you for a great question. This question relates to the bigger topic of pending items, things that are dependent on somebody else's actions or on some event to happen. In either case, you're right. You do not want these items eating up daily exit zone space. You may recall in my top five homeless categories video, I mentioned a donation depot and a returns depot. These both represent a location for pending items. Emptying the donation depot is pending the moment the bins finally fill up. Removing the return items are pending the event that you are going to a store. It probably won't surprise you to hear that every time I'm going to the container store, I find myself compelled to ask, do I need to return something? Same goes for Staples and the Home Depot. But let's get back to your question regarding friends and family and the Tupperware, the hat, the toy, and the book that's been left behind. I would also store these in a dedicated return area. It's not really important where that area is as where it is not. It should not be crowding your exit zone, grouped with store returns, or in a remote, forgettable place. You'll be surprised what a difference it makes to have just one place dedicated to items to return. But to really increase the likelihood of return, wherever possible, attach the item to an event. This is a great opportunity to bring up a concept from my book, The Circulation Solution, I call the newspaper analogy. The newspaper analogy has to do with separating a task from a project, just as a headline on the front page is separate from the full story inside. In the case of pending items, that book, toy, Tupperware container, hat, represent the full story, and you need a headline to connect you to them. The most attention-grabbing, timely headline for this is a note on your calendar. Is there a time you regularly see your family or an upcoming event with your friends? Add a note to that date about the item they left behind. You don't need to keep an item out for all the days leading up to that event. It only creates confusion. You just need the reliable reminder. If you are worried that you will forget your new dedicated zone for return items, write the location on your event until it becomes a habit. If you don't have a regular meeting or a scheduled event bringing you together, make a note on your friend or family member's birthday. Maybe that's not for another year, but at least you limit the separation to a year. And finally, I recommend keeping an ongoing paper file labeled pending. It seems that every time we clear a client's desk, there are things remaining that can't be put away because they are waiting for someone else to take action. These items are perfect candidates for the pending file. Maybe check this file every month to remind you of an order you need to follow up on or an action you're still waiting on. But by and large, these are going to be items that don't demand your action. They just need a safe place to go until someone else takes action. In the meantime, you free up your number one organizing tool, a clear work surface. For more easy organizing tips, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.